Chris is the author of the wildly controversial book. It focuses on uniting the LGBT Catholic community and the church. It's called Building a Bridge. Please welcome Father James Martin. Hi, Father. So, Father, tell me what inspired you to write this book and why is now the perfect time? Sure. You remember in 2016 uh, at the Orlando uh, Pulse nightclub, there were uh, 49 people who were killed. And I felt that the uh, Catholic bishops in this country really didn't reach out and say that they were even sorry. Uh, only a few did. Cardinal Supich was one of them. And I thought it revealed a certain failure of the church to kind of even recognize that these people exist. And so that, that led to the publication of this book. How has the church received the book? Uh, depends which part of the church. Um, <laughs> which part of the church received it and which part of the church did not receive it? Uh, the part of the church that received it well were people who know LGBT people, know that they're already part of the church, uh, and people that were kind of open-minded. The part of the church that didn't receive it were people who really don't think that LGBT people should be listened to. And so, but I'd say the vast majority of people are fine with it. 95% of the people I speak to are very happy. And the LGBT Catholics I speak to are, you know, very grateful that the conversation sure. has been opened. Right. How much has the new Pope changed sort of the direction or outlook at the LGBT community and everybody, really? Yeah, a ton. Uh, his five most famous words are, who am I to judge? Uh, and he was referring to first gay priests and then gay people, he said in general. And uh, that really has helped LGBT people, uh, you know, who are already part of the church, feel more comfortable in the church. Right. And what, uh, what do you think that the Catholic LGBT community looking for? What are they looking for? Really just a sense of welcome. I mean, that's the thing that's, that anyone would be looking for in the church, to feel like they're, they're welcome, that they're part of the church, uh, and that they're uh, valued and visible, too, that, that they're really, uh, and they have gifts to bring to the church. So just to be treated like human beings. Exactly. As a Catholic priest, have you faced some criticism and pushback? I mean, we know there's been some controversy. Have you personally been affected? Well, I mean, there's been uh, protests and, you know, stuff online from crazy online hate sites, but, you know, my response is, who cares? I mean, this is, I think, an important thing to do. I think that this is what Jesus would do. He's always reaching out to people yes, on is. the margins, and yes. I think that's what the church would do. Why do you think it's taken so long? Uh, the, the church for so long has, has not been open to this. Why has it taken so long? Well, I mean, look at our society. I mean, even American society has taken a long time to kind of understand LGBT people in the church. Uh, you know, I mean, the church, as they say, uh, thinks in centuries not minutes and so it takes a while for them to come around but I really think Pope Francis who has you know said who am I to judge he's used the word gay he has gay friends really has set the tone and um, and you know uh, people like uh, your Cardinal here Cardinal Supich has been very welcoming he's talked about having listening sessions and that's I think that's what the church needs to do just listen to these people and right. find out what their experiences are have you met the Pope uh, once for about five seconds how was it <laughs> How was the best five seconds of your life? Uh, it was <laughs> <laughs> it was very brief. He said, pray for me, and I promised that I would, and that was that. So, yeah, I'm not his, I'm not his best pal, so. Yeah. yeah, and I heard that you also say Cardinal Supich is one of the best Cardinals ever? He is. I think he's, uh, you have probably one of the most uh, progressive and open-minded and forward-thinking archbishops in the whole country. And wow. I think, oh, I really do. I think he's a real leader in the worldwide church. And uh, I'm very grateful for his invitation. I'm speaking at the cathedral uh, twice. And he's just been very supportive. And I think he's a great guy. Right. Yeah. You're going to be speaking at a, a lot of places in Chicago, right? Yeah. So uh, tonight at the cathedral, tomorrow at Loyola, Chicago, go Ramblers. Uh, Ramblers. <laughs> <and then> <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow night at the cathedral as well, and then Catholic Theological Union on Saturday. Yeah, yeah. and you know Sister Jean. I do. I'm probably the only person in Chicago that does not know Sister Jean. Oh, you don't oh. know Sister Jean. I do Sister not Jean. know Sister Jean. I do not know the Pope, and I do not know Sister Jean. So. Well, you probably um, like to know her now. You well, should have this bobblehead. Oh, thank you very much. Yes. It's very thoughtful. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean I'm a big fan. I've I've uh, emailed her about a couple things, but you know, I mean, what's not to like about a 98 year old nun who supports the team and is just prayerful and holy and hardworking? I mean, I I think her schedule would kill me. You know, and I'm 57. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Well, so what are you doing Easter Sunday? Got any big plans? Uh, I'll be with, uh, well, other than Mass, um, I know. I'll be with uh, my, my sister's family is in northern New Jersey. My mom comes up, and it's pretty simple, but I mean, it's a, I, I love Easter, and I, I'm praying that the snow is gone in New York, so. Uh, <laughs> All right, Father, thank, thank you, you so much. You better get Sister Jean to pray for you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> you can pick up a copy of Father James Martin's book today. Father James Martin will be at Holy Name Cathedral tonight and tomorrow, as he just said, in Loyola on Friday and at the Catholic Theological Union on Saturday. Busy guy.